Today I'm going to show you how to make some XLR cables. The first thing we need to know is exactly how much cable we need. The price of XLR cable is ever rising and we're using good wire aka Megami cable. The cheapest way is to buy it in bulk. You're going to need a good set of wire strippers. You can get these at Home Depot, Lowe's, Amazon, anywhere. It's not a must that you have them, but a good set of helping hands is great to have. You can get a really good set for cheap online. And there's also these silicone mats that you can use. I'm also using a rosin flux paste. Uh, it really changed the game with my solder and it's kind of like a cheat code. It just helps everything flow. The solder I'm using is 6040 rosin and I got my soldering iron at Harbor Freight. You also can't forget good connectors. We're using Neutrik style connectors. Um, they're because cheap connectors suck, you don't want to use them anyway. Cheap connectors are just hard to work with. You gotta put the connector on first. That's your first step. The first step is put the connector on because if you don't, it's gonna be impossible to get this end on. You're gonna have to undo everything. And even before you strip it, as soon as you cut the end and it's good, put that connector on. Then we're gonna strip the outside of the cable with our wire stripper. It should have a big notch on it, depending on what kind of wire stripper you got. Then that'll unveil the ground, and we're just gonna twist it around to kind of make it its own wire. Then we use the stripper. Then we're gonna pull out a lighter. Pull out a lighter and light this shit up. This is the insulation that they put in with the copper wire to give it this extra Megami zing, but it's not going to help us with the uh, soldering process. So we're just going to burn it off with our lighter. All right, then we're going to tin our wires. I start with 10 in the ground, then the positive and the negative. Then we'll switch them out with our helping hands. So the schematic that we're using has pin whatever to whatever. But just note that as long as you get the ground in pin one and you're using it for yourself, as long as you match whichever color two and three on the ends, it will work. But when the next person comes along, and if they have a problem with the cable, they may assume, you know, one thing is another. I don't know. But in general, the positive is the red. The negative is the white. Obviously, the bare copper wire is the ground. So now we're going to solder the ends. Here's another better graph from Neutrik that shows the wire and schematic. So I've resorted to putting the help of hands down on the table. Now we'll put our connector on. With the Neutrik style connector, there's only one way that they'll go on. It adds to their locking capability. Then you just repeat the process on the other end. Now we're going to use our voltmeter just to test it real quick. If you don't have a voltmeter, you could always just plug a dynamic mic into something and go, hey, check, check. As long as you're not running power through it, there shouldn't be any issues. This particular meter has a test tone, which makes it easy. Just check all the pins. And that's how to make an XLR cable yourself. Thanks for watching. I got a whole lot more on the way. Please like and subscribe.